What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel and in this video we are going to talk about iterators in Kotlin. So if you didn't see the first part of the series, we essentially went through talking about the library, object, the book, author, genre, everything that we're going to use to get or to go through all of the collections operators for this series. So if you haven't seen that yet, I would strongly recommend going back, looking at it, watching it, and coming back to this video. So to get things started, we will come over to our project, we will look at our collections package, and we will create a new Kotlin file simply called iterators. We can go ahead, we can minimize that. We'll zoom in on iterators and we will just create our main function. So the first thing with the iterators that you can do is simply just iterate over the entire list. So for that, we can do library.books.iterator to get the iterator uh, instance. And what the iterator is going to do is it will each time that you call a function on it it will give you the next item in the list and it'll keep iterating over it until it doesn't have any left one way that we can do that is with a let scope function if you aren't familiar with the let scope function i would recommend checking out our scope function series but essentially what it does is it, it lets us create this iterator instance scoped just to here. So we can't call iterator outside of it. So getting back to the iterator itself, the way that we would go over the list is we would have a while function. And we would say while iterator has next, we can then do val book equals iterator next. Now this is important because if we just have this block has next and we run it, which I'm not going to do, it will create a infinite loop because it will check, well, does it have next? Well, yes, it does have next because this next function, what it does is it will return the next element in the iteration and then it will increment up. So if you don't call next and you're always checking if it has next, it will always return true. So again, this calling next is crucial if you're doing anything with a while iterator has next. So the next thing that we'll do though is we'll just print out the book. We will go ahead, we will run this function and you can see down here, it has went through all of our books and printed out all of them. That's fine, but it's a little cumbersome. As I already said, it's also prone to errors if you, you know, either forget to call next or if you do like I did when I was putting together the series and you just do iterator next and you comment out the next call. But let me just go ahead and fix this up real quick. All right. So. Another thing you can do is you can do a for loop. And so with that, what it looks like is you do library, books, and then let again. And then we'll just call this books. And then from there, we just do for book in books. And what this is doing is it's saying that we have this books variable. And the books variable is going to be equal to a list of book and so it's going to take one book each time so that's where this book variable is coming from and then we can simply do the same thing that we we did previously so we go ahead we rerun this and you will see the exact same thing happened so in general I would recommend if you want to iterate over something to at least use this this option using the for 
book in books. I don't want to say that there will never be a time that you wouldn't use the iterator and then has next and iterating over it in that way. There very well might be a, a time, but just because it is prone to errors, it is prone to pretty bad errors too. An infinite loop is not great. I would recommend avoiding this unless you absolutely have a use case that demands this where another option, another safer option is not available. So speaking of more options, we'll go ahead, we'll comment out the books and then we can go library dot books again and then for each and then for this we'll just call it book and from there just do a print line for the book again this will do the same thing as our for loop but it saves us a couple of lines i also apologize if you can hear a uh, car alarm in the background it's been going off all morning and so one thing that I like to do when I'm just looking at a function and it looks like it's doing a little bit too much behind the scenes, I'm not quite sure what it's doing, is I'll just click, take a look. You do command, click, and it'll take you to the function so that you can see what it's doing. And so you'll notice that this is doing something pretty close to what we already had. It's, it's essentially wrapping our for loop. Now, looking at it, it, it is a little bit more com complex looking, even though it's on one line. Because you have a for loop, it's an extension function on top of the iterable. So it just has to reference this as opposed to giving it a name. And then it's a higher order function as well, which means it takes the function, the for each function takes a function as a parameter. And so I'm not going to get into higher order functions and kind of how they work. I think that is a little bit more advanced than we need to actually get into for the collections tutorials. But if you'd like to learn more about higher order functions, if you'd want me to go over those more in depth, leave a comment below. But getting back over to our iterators example, that's the for each loop. And you'll notice that we're progressively making these a little bit easier and easier. Now, one thing to note is this for each doesn't give us the option of knowing where in the list it's showing up. So let's say that we want to show a numbered list going one through whatever. We can do that as well. So books, and then instead of for each, we're going to use this for each indexed. And so we'll just go with the, the default value. So index and book. And then from here, we'll just do our print line again. And then we'll go with this to start. We'll, we'll update it just a little bit in a second. I'll show you why. If we go ahead and we run that, let me zoom in on this. You'll see that it starts at zero. And that's because any sort of collection and you know an array is going to be zero indexed. That means that it starts at zero as opposed to one. So we can get around that by doing a little bit of math within our string. And so if it will agree with me and let me type things, we can just do index plus one. And then if we go ahead, we run it you'll notice now it prints out one, two, three, four, five, six, all of that good stuff. That is it for our video on iterators. We covered most of the basics, most of the things that I think are most applicable to your your day-to-day -day life working in Kotlin. Uh, the one thing that I'll just sort of re-highlight, re-talk uh, about, or I guess highlight just makes more sense, re-highlight, doesn't. Um, all of these progressively got easier and easier. So the first one with this iterator, this would be the least preferred route because it's just, it's not, not very friendly. Uh, also, if you're just looking purely at lines, it takes up the most lines of code. And then the next one would be this for loop. 
This is a bit better. The for loop at least abstracts out the uh, iterator has next, iterator.next functionality. So this is safer. You can't, you can't get yourself into an infinite loop, for example, by accident with this. But then it still has a little bit of extra code, and that's where this for each comes in. This is where really like the preferred, if you're going to do a for each style of loop where you're iterating over and you just care about the item, not necessarily the index, using this for each would be the route to take. And then the final one, the thing that's really nice about Kotlin is they recognize that, you know, you do care about indexes at times. And so that's where this for each indexed is really nice. It gives you that extra flexibility of knowing where in the list an item is coming from and then you can use it then but anyway that is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already and you're excited for the next videos in the series please be sure to subs please be sure to subscribe and other than that thank you so much for watching 